What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a visual effects 3D scene walkthrough in Blender of this 3D environment that we've added to this live action shot. As usual, this scene walkthrough is not really a tutorial, but will show some of the concepts that we've used to create the final shot. I'll be going through each view layer one by one, and then going through the compositing node tree that we've used to get the final result. As I mentioned in the last video, we are having a 30% off sale on our Spiderfy Void System add-on for Blender for the rest of August. So if you're interested in this add-on or you may find it useful, just use the discount code AUGUST30 for that 30% off at Blender Market Checkout. Anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender. This is our uh, 3D scene here. As you can see, we have some buildings. We have a few uh, image planes here that we're using as a uh, wet map for our basketball court, as well as some graffiti, grunge, and some nature assets that we've used to dirty up the scene a bit. If we go to camera view here, you can see our live action shot in the background. We have this uh, character playing basketball in the shot in this outdoor outdoor court here and uh, you know we've added some basic CG elements to the shot. We've added this uh, little fence around the court, some City Builder 3D buildings in the background and uh, you know some chain link fences in the foreground as well. And uh, these planes at the bottom here, one of them is a shadow catcher but I also have three different planes here to grunge up the environment. I have a wet map with an alpha channel so that we can overlay it on top of our footage. I have some grass assets distributed along one plane to dirty up the environment and then I have some graffiti as well. But uh, anyways, this is the first view layer that we have here. As you can see on the top right here, we have, this is our wet map view layer. So I've only enabled our scene collection with our wet maps on this specific view layer so that we can composite it together with everything else a little bit more uh, specifically. So as you can see, if I go to rendered view, you can sort of see what's happening here. Everything in our scene except for our wet map is not being shown in this view layer. And that's so we can composite this wet map more effectively. So this is our wet map layer as you can see on the right here you can see that there are some reflections in the water of our buildings and the chain link fence here however you don't actually see the buildings in the shot for this view layer and that's because as I mentioned for all of the other collections in this view layer we've enabled the indirect only option and then of course for our actual buildings themselves they're in their own layer and we've actually enabled them as a holdout layer as well in addition to indirect only so that uh, anywhere the wet maps would be hidden by the buildings is not being rendered in this view layer so we can overlay them without creating their own mask but it's nice you can see kind of some reflections of the buildings in the wet map but not actually the buildings themselves but fairly simple material here for our uh, wet map that we've added I'll go to um, our shading tab here and uh, go to render view as well so this is our node setup for this uh, wet map material. And in doing some research about wet materials in general, what I found is that in general, you want to make the wet part of the material look less rough and darker. So what I've done here in Blender is uh, I've just taken this very basic wet concrete image. I've done a very basic corner pin effect on it so that the image is stretched in the same way as our uh, background UV projection of our live action environment. Um, so I've just used this as our wet map, just isolating the darker portions of the image and I've done that by using some color ramp nodes here so I've taken our wet map put it into a color ramp node and then into our roughness so that only the dark parts of this image would be reflective and then to get that darker look for this wet map as well what I've done is I've put it into a color ramp node again and then mixed it with our diffuse material of the live action environment projection making the other color where the wet map shows up a bit darker as the secondary color here which is going to darken the portions of the image which are reflective so that's what I did there of course to overlay this wet map I wanted to have it as an alpha channel so what I've done to create that alpha channel where the reflection didn't exist is I've just taken our wet map texture put it through a color ramp and then with a mix shader I've input our main material node and mix that with a transparent BSDF shader so that the dark portions of the image where the wet map existed would be shown but any other portion of our material would be completely transparent so that we could render it with an alpha alpha channel. But uh, anyways, that's how we created our wet map. As I mentioned, for each view layer, we're only rendering the collection with the actual elements that we want in that view layer. And all of the other collections are enabled as indirect only so that they affect the element that is being rendered but aren't being rendered themselves. But uh, anyways, the next view layer that I added was our ground graffiti here. And as you can see here, if I go to rendered view, you can see the uh, graffiti that's been added to our scene. I've just overlaid a very basic graffiti texture onto our environment. And in our shading tab, what I've done here to render this with an alpha channel as well, in addition to darkening down our graffiti texture here and putting it into our diffuse node, I've also used 
another mix shader with a transparent BSDF node as the second input in the mix shader. I've uh, used that concrete texture to create an alpha channel where the graffiti didn't exist as the darkest portion of the texture. So using a mix shader with a transparent BSDF shader input and then crunching down the values of your texture with a color ramp is a nice way to create transparent overlaid textures on top of your scene. And that's what I've done a lot in this specific environmental setup. But uh, that was a super simple view layer here. The next two layers that I added were the chain link fence in the foreground as well as the chain link fence in the background of our shot. So as you can see here, we have our two chain link fences here in the foreground as well as this chain link fence kind of surrounding our basketball court. And I've just used an array modifier on a model of a chain link fence here and extended it to get the right length that I wanted. And the reason I separated these uh, chain link fence layers is because this chain link fence in the foreground is probably going to need some different compositing effects added to it. For example, since it's closer to the camera, we're going to likely need to add some kind of blur effect to match the depth of field of the live action shot and make it look a bit better. So I've done those two different view layers as usual, of course, just making all of the other elements in the scene indirect only in each of their collections so that they affect this element indirectly through the lighting. After adding our chain link fence, I've added some grass elements to our scene. I wanted to give a little bit more life to the environment. So I imported some Nasarga light assets and distributed them on a particle system as a plane in our environment. I have a link to the Nasarga light spiderfy bundle in the description if you're interested in this add-on as well as spiderfy so be sure to check that out it's a really awesome add-on you got tons of different uh you know assets to choose from you got lots of trees grass all highly detailed work in both EV and cycles and super fun to work with. But anyways, I've added these grass elements on this particle system. I'll go ahead and bring up the viewport display to 50% maybe or 45% just to show you guys what we're dealing with here. You can see the different grass that we've added. And the reason that the grass is only showing up in certain parts of our image here is because I've weight painted where I want the grass to actually show up. So as you can see, if I go to uh, weight paint, you can see that I've painted where I want these nature assets to show up, which gives it a little bit more organic feel. And I have a tutorial on how you can weight paint these assets on this channel as well. So I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description if you're interested. Super simple concept and can be applied to lots of different shots to add some life to your scene. But anyways, as you can see, if I go to rendered view here, you can see these nature assets rendered by themselves, which in my opinion, adds a lot of life to the scene. But uh, anyways, the next thing we added to our scene were the buildings surrounding our basketball court here. And I've just used our procedural favela buildings from our City Builder 3D asset based add on and just kind of adjusted them to fit our scene here. As you can see, if I just go to our City Builder 3D tab, we've just added this procedural favela three different times here. And the cool thing about these procedural assets in particular is if you go to the modifiers tab, you can change the length, width and height of the building as well as a random factor to give each building its own unique result. So as you can see I can adjust the height here, make uh, some taller assets, maybe adjust the width a bit or the length, but uh, you know, you can create lots of different variation in each of your assets and fit them a little bit more appropriately. But I've just used three different procedural favelas here. I've adjusted the randomness a bit on each of them as well to get a little bit more unique look. And as usual, all of the other collections other than the buildings on this view layer are enabled as indirect only so that they will only affect the lighting of these buildings but won't actually show up in our scene. After adding our buildings, the last thing that I added was the shadow catcher here. And the only element that's being rendered on this view layer is a very basic ground plan that I've enabled the shadow catcher option under our object properties tab here. So it's only rendering the shadows of all of the other elements in our scene. And because we've enabled them as indirect only, they won't actually show up, but they will create the shadows on this ground plane. So as you can see here, if I go to rendered view, you can see the shadows that are being created by both our buildings, our chain link fences, and our grass elements in our scene here so that we can composite this shadow and have a little bit more control over the final result. Finally, in addition to all these elements, and all these different view layers. I've added a very basic sun to our scene to sidelight our environment, as well as an HDRI of our city in the environment tab. And as you can see from our camera view here, if we look at our live action shot, our character is being lit from the right side by the sun in our scene. So I've tried to mimic that effect with a very basic sun lamp side lighting our environment as well, trying to match the CG lighting to the live action composite. Anyways, after creating this environment and separating each element Element into its own specific view layer, I did a quick test render and went into the compositing process. 
All right, guys, so I'll just go through each different view layer that we've added one by one here in the node tree. It looks pretty complicated, but it's a uh, fairly simple process once you get a hang of the general concepts here. So starting off, we have our uh, movie clip going into an undistortion and scale node. That is set up automatically whenever you set up your tracking scene and solve for the optics of your camera. Then the first thing we added is our uh, ground graffiti view layer. I've run it through an RGB curves node to uh, overlay on top of our live action shot. So as you can see here, if I just uh, create another output node, I will input this into a view node. And uh, this is our shot with just those graffiti elements added over top of it. Then the next thing that we added is our wet map layer. So as you can see here, if I move our viewer node to the next alpha over node, you can see I've added our wet map view layer here. And as you can see, I've also darkened down our uh, wet map information with an RGB curves node here, just to make it even darker than it already was. The cool thing about this wet map in particular is if we just uh, check it out by itself, you can see on the left here, the reflections of the actual building in our scene which uh, I think is a really nice way to integrate all of your CG elements into your environment with those reflections. But uh, anyways, after adding our uh, wet map, I've added our shadow catcher on top of everything. We wanted to add this before our grass element because we want our shadow to be below our grass elements as well as our buildings and our chain link fences. So I've added our shadow catcher here. As you can see, just our shadow information, you can see all the different shadows, especially in the back here from our buildings. And then I've just decreased the factor on our shadows to 0.65 because our shadows were a little bit too dark for uh, the composite. Finally, next I've added our grass view layer. I've run this through a hue saturation and value node to bring down the saturation because it was a little bit too green for me. And then I've also color corrected it a bit cooler to uh, match our live action shot a bit better. And uh, then I've darkened it a bit as well. So as you can see here, connect this view node right here. We have our nature added to our scene in addition to our shadow catcher and it's blending into our shot fairly effectively. One cool thing you can notice here is uh, the shadows from where our buildings would be are indirectly affecting the grass on the ground here. So as you can see, we have a dark portion of grass where the sun is not hitting, but the grass elements are still there, but they're being lit in a more realistic way because that building that we're seeing in the shot is actually blocking where that light would be. So that little extra touch of realism coming through uh, where the shadows are in your scene can help a lot. Um, and then of course over here where the uh, sun is a bit more prevalent, our grass is showing up a bit more and is much brighter. Anyways, finally, the next viewer that we've uh, overlaid is our buildings view layer here and I've darkened it down a bit with an RGB curve setting and as you can see here super simple just overlaid it with an RGB curves one thing that some of you mentioned on the breakdown is that the buildings are a little bit too small for our character here and I totally agree with you there I should have scaled up our buildings as well but I was pretty happy with the result so I went ahead and uploaded it next time I'll uh, try to pay attention to the scale a bit more but uh, yeah that was our next view layer then I've added our background chain link fence here to our next alpha over node and I've darkened it down a bit as well and again we have our shadows integrating this chain link fence into our shot a bit better as you can see um, so we have a dark portion of the chain link fence here which is uh, because of the shadow of this building here it's creating this nice shadow on our chain link fence as well which is helping to integrate that into our environment but after adding our background chain link fence I've added our chain link fence in the foreground through this view layer here and um, I've brought down the brightness quite a bit as you can see from this RGB curves node originally it was like this, which is obviously way too bright. So I brought it down with an RGB curves node. Of course, I could also bring it down in the 3D scene as well, but this worked just fine. And I've also, as I mentioned, I wanted to blur this element separately. So I've added a very basic blur node on our chain link fence in the foreground, just to take the edge off of the sharpness of this element here. Anyways, I've also rotoscoped out our character here with a very basic mask and then overlaid that on top as well for our final composite. And uh, of course, I've also added some color correction in the editing process as well, but I didn't do that inside of Blender. Uh, I just added a very basic uh, Lumetri color preset inside of Adobe Premiere just to add a final grade to the image. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. I will be doing some more in-depth tutorials on some of these kinds concepts in the future videos so stay tuned for that if you're interested and let us know what you'd like to see next i'll see you next time